first to face the dragons are Giorgia Granata from Italy and her Kiwi husband, Ellie Krapko. The couple are hoping that where there's muck, there'll also be brass. Whenever somebody thinks about uh, doing their business in the toilet, they're going to think about our brand. In the den, a display designed to highlight the planet-saving potential of Georgia and Ellie's business has already got the dragons talking. I think that's fat balls, isn't it? That's fat balls? Yeah, that's what ends up in sewers. Have you not seen them, fatbergs? No. They are massive. They're like the size of that lift, stuck in sewers. Oh. Oh. But Georgia is confident that an investment today won't be money down the drain. What a win for a dragon to say, yeah, I'm in the poop business. Hi, I'm Georgia. And I'm Ellie. And we're the founders at WIPE. WIPE is the eco-friendly way to clean up down there. Today, we're asking for 50,000 pounds in exchange for 2% equity. Do you ever feel like toilet paper doesn't clean you up all the way? After all, dry doesn't clean. You wouldn't clean your dishes with a dry washcloth. And certainly if you had poo on your arm, you wouldn't be satisfied with just wiping it with dry tissue. So why do we feel any different about toilet paper? When I moved to the UK from Italy five years ago, I was desperately missing my bidet. And I found out that here, it's quite common to use wet wipes. In fact, in the UK, 11 billion wet wipes are used each year. And of those, hundreds of millions are flushed, where they cause 300,000 sewer blockages every year. Here you can see a fatberg. A full-size fatberg, like the one that occurred in Whitechapel, was 250 meters long and weighed 130 tons. And I told myself, there has to be a better way to solve this problem. So I teamed up with Ellie and we created Wiped and launched it last September. Simply apply our specially formulated 99% natural gel onto regular toilet tissue to instantly turn it into an efficient, 100% biodegradable and genuinely flushable toilet wipe. We're on a mission to redefine toilet time and we'd love to have you along for the ride. A cleansing gel which transforms a sheet of regular toilet paper into an environmentally friendly wet wipe is the offering from Georgia Granata and Ellie Krapka. And all you do, dispense one pump on the toilet tissue, spread it, wipe, and then flush it just like normal toilet paper. They're seeking a £50,000 investment in return for 2% of their clean green company. But something he heard in their pitch has thrown Peter Jones. Georgia and Ellie. Yep. The thing that really hit me was you said that it helps you when you have poo on your arm. So I'm a bit confused. Have I been doing it wrong all these years? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know about that, but some nationalities, it's acceptable to leave residue on their private parts when rationally, if it was on any other part of your, of your body, on your knee, on your elbow, on your hand, you would not never... OK, so this, is, so this is a product for your bum, absolutely. not yes. for your arm. No, I was absolutely. just an example. No, great. So in other words, you've got to take a, a gel product, put it onto toilet paper... Exactly. Yeah. ..and then wipe your bottom. Mm -hmm. Exactly. OK. So who's your nearest competitor? Andrix. Andrix. So Andrix are doing this, are they? No, so Andrix are doing flushable wipes. Oh, yeah, no, I don't mean flushable wipes. Because I have myself received samples outside of the den of mm -hmm. two businesses that are currently doing this. But instead of saying it's about toilets at all, they've just said, turn your tissue into a wet wipe. One of them is in one of the big supermarkets. So why this and not the one that's already out there and actually yep. quite well distributed? So I think I know both the ones you're talking about. Um, it's, a, it's a different proposition. It's a spray. A spray will do exactly what water will do, which is it will break the tissue. Yeah, and also the eco-friendly angle isn't really covered very well. The packaging is plastic. Our bottle is aluminium. So I feel that our product is really superior in every way from that point of view. Georgia and Ellie believe their product has an environmental edge over the competition. Now, Stephen Bartlett wants to establish if the couple have the CVs to transform the nation's WCs. Really fascinating business. 
What's your professional background? My background is uh, in product development in the fashion and luxury industry. Why are you smirking? Just because now I'm in the butt business. <laughs> 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 and, uh, and I used to work in luxury. <laughs> That's all. And uh, my background, I was in the New Zealand Air Force for 10 years. And then since uh, moving to London, I've been uh, in e-commerce. Guys, I really, really get it. I think the concept's brilliant, and I think I can visualise it for me. I don't know if I want to say that. <laughs> um, but also, I've got young kids. I have to come and help with the whole bum wiping situation, so I can totally see that this is much better to four or five goes with the toilet roll. Yeah. But my worry, because I'm sure any one of us could open the door to put this on a shelf tomorrow, mm -hmm. but it's not putting it on the shelf that's the challenge, mm -hmm. it's getting it off the shelf. Yeah. To raise awareness for a problem that maybe 90-odd percent of the population didn't realise existed and to change a consumer buying habit yep. is going to take an enormous marketing spend. Maybe it seems like a lot of people don't know about this problem, but actually we really believe that with the right branding, which we've already built, we just have to push past the adoption curve and then it's just going to take off, I'm sure about it. Yeah, I tend to think it's the education piece because you need to lead a change in behavior. And I think influencers are a good way to do that, who can really help change how people think about wiping their bottoms. The wall that we keep running into is that when you get influencers and ask them to talk about wiping your butt, um, <laughs> a lot of them will politely decline. What you basically need to do is get a piece of tissue paper, put some brown mud on it, and get an influencer to hold it. Yeah. And then that should be enough to stop the thumb in the timeline. But you yeah. need to go for the provocation. Yeah, it's yeah. a good shout. Getting Giorgio and Deli's product to go viral is a challenge that's clearly intrigued the den's resident social media maestro. But Tuka Suleiman believes the duo could be overlooking a more straightforward route to market. I'm quite big in the baby business. So have you sold any to babies? Not to babies, but to their parents. <laughs> 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 Have you sold to any baby retailers? Yeah. Um, our thought was that the baby market was so overcrowded and we really wanted to address the throwaway culture to uh, adults also while working on the wet wipe issue. I think you might find that the children in the baby market is easier. Parents will talk about their babies cleaning their bottoms. Um, it's much easier. I don't think so. Sorry? I think you've positioned yourself in the least saturated part of the market. Otherwise, you're in there with bloody talcum powder and all of these other children products, which and no, you, but I, but it's I, impossible to... What I'm to... saying here is that if you've got mothers who are very eco-minded and who are using wipes, they now see that they can get round this problem. I, I tend to disagree with Tuka's point. They never disagree with me, because I've got a lot more experience than you've got. Social media? What do you know about business? What do I know about business, Tuka? I built a 300 million pound business at 28 years old. Oh, come on, please. What did I say? Nothing, carry on. Talk about social media. As I was saying before Tuka got triggered there, I tend to disagree with Tuka about the, the positioning and the narrative, right? So I think in terms of finding an interesting social narrative, this grown-ups with dirty butts thing, I think is pretty compelling, right? However, I'm sitting here and trying to decide whether I want to be in the butt business. For me, squirting a gel onto a piece of tissue paper I can't seem to get myself excited about it. So for that reason, I'm gonna say that I'm out. Georgia and Ellie have lost their first dragon, as despite a heated exchange, Stephen Bartlett goes cold on the deal. And when it comes to the frequently thorny issue of valuation, Peter Jones is just getting warmed up. Am I right in thinking that you're valuing this concept at two and a half million? Yes. That's correct. We've raised investment at the start of the year at the valuation two million. How much of the company did you sell? Five percent. So you got a hundred K? Yeah. Okay. I'm genuinely concerned that the business is going to really struggle. You have nowhere near the amount of capital to launch a business with the ambition that you have. You need to go and raise a few hundred thousand but I don't want to be one of those investors that invest 50K and then ultimately I'm diluted. So I'm gonna say I'm out. 
but you know, good luck. I think I love the brand Thank Wipe. You. I think it's cracking. Georgia, Ellie, I'm going to tell you where I am. Of course, I love what you do. You know, we're on this absolutely the same page. But I'm afraid I have been approached by another brand, and their valuation that they offered to me was better. Yeah. So I can't see that you would be able to meet my valuation expectations. So I'm not going to waste anybody's time. I'm out. Okay. Ellie, Georgia, my big worry is you are so fundamentally trying to change a habit, and that is going to cost potentially millions. The 50 grand I give you today is going to go in the blink of an eye, and I'd be little Miss Moneybags that everybody's looking at. So best of luck with it, but I can't invest, and I'm out. Four dragons have now bowed out. Only Tuka Suleiman remains. Will he have glimpsed sufficient potential in Georgia and Ellie's product to justify tabling a £50,000 bid? You are very credible. Thank you. But the way that I see it, you've got to get this into people's hands. Yep. The only way you can really do that is through retail or distributors. So probably um, I'm your ideal dragon. I can see this in the baby world. We know all the stores and I like the product. I'm going to make you an offer. I'll offer you all the 50,000, but I want 15%. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Should we talk to the wall? Yep. An offer from Tuka Suleiman, who is keen to add Georgia and Ellie's enterprise to his portfolio of infant-related businesses. I don't think we should yeah. just drop our bets. Yeah, I don't Fine. think. Will his extensive contacts in the baby world be enough to tempt the couple into a change of strategy? Tuka, thank you very much uh, for the offer. However, I don't think that we completely align on which way this business should go and how it should grow. And while I think that you could bring a huge amount of value, I think for us it just doesn't quite make sense at this time. Fine. In that case, I'm out. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Tuka Suleiman may be tops in business, but when it comes to generating a profit from bottoms, Georgia and Ellie simply didn't buy into his vision. Why? Why not? What is it about the bots? I would have loved to walk away with a dragon, but if we have to reconsider everything that the business is rooted on, then it's just not worth it for me. But the entrepreneurs are keeping their cool following an encounter in which the dragons themselves absorbed the heat. I think the fire between uh, Stephen and Tuca was, was interesting to see, but I think it was all part of the course. I'm Italian, so it didn't even register. <laughs> Stephen, what happens in the den stays in the den. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs>